Good morning. How is everyone today? Well, I am so glad to be back today. Um, of course, we did not broadcast last week, and uh, it was a very difficult week for us. As you see, I'm here by myself without Pastor Jamie this morning. He's actually on duty today. So, it's just me this morning. And I just wanted to take a moment to come on here and thank everyone that reached out to us and messaged us and prayed for us. Um, those of you who don't know, last Wednesday, May 10th, uh, very early morning, we received a phone call that Jamie's father had unexpectedly passed away. And um, needless to say, we were absolutely blindsided. It was not anything that was expected and um, we just we were really um, wow I mean I can't even describe the emotions that we felt as soon as we heard the words um, your father has passed away um, so as you know we all we loaded up within you know an hour and we were on the road to Texas to um, take care of, of his you know, final affairs, his, his estate and everything. And it is going to be an ongoing process for Pastor Jamie and I. So just bear with us. Um, we, we will come on as we can over the next few weeks, but our intent is to continue to bring hope and uh, to bring messages of love of the Lord to you because that's the way Lance would have wanted it. Um, one of the most precious gifts that we received uh, when we got to Jamie's dad's house, uh, many of you know he's he was always on our broadcast. He was always commenting. He was listening. And as a matter of fact, when when we went on our sabbatical for a while, he he actually called us and he said, "You know, you are my ministers. You are. I learn more from your teachings and your your broadcasts than I've learned in all my years of trying to find a church home." To me, if we never brought another message again, that that touched our heart so deeply um, that we were ministering to his father like that. And so when when you know he was on our broadcast Sunday before last, and then Monday night, uh, Pastor Sherry and I had an impromptu, um, just a little live discussion about some things. And Lance was on there. That was Monday night. He was on there. He was making comments. Um, he was interacting with us. Uh, Tuesday, he went on about his normal life of uh, working on his hot rods, which is the number one thing he loved to do in his retirement. Um, and then Wednesday morning, he was just gone. So um, when we got to his house Wednesday afternoon, um, the first one of the first things we found was his computer where he always sat and he always watched us at his dining room table had his computer set up there and beside his computer were notes that he had taken from that Sunday's message he had passages of scripture he had some things written down um, and just that that was the most precious thing that he could have left for for Jamie and for myself um, knowing that he knew his Lord. Um, he had a relationship with God. He called on Jesus as his Savior, and we know that we will see him again. And so we found great peace in that and great comfort in, in that. Even though he was physically not there, we know that the day will come when we will be reunited with him and with Carol. Uh, we lost Carol almost five years ago. And Lance had truly been in mourning ever since then. He missed her terribly, and um, he felt very lost without her. And I know that's why he found great comfort in um, in the Word of God and being able to study and be in communion with the Lord. So I just wanted to express um, our gratitude from our family. Um, that we we coveted your we do covet your prayers we draw from your strength and your encouragement and so thank you so much for um for reaching out to us it is definitely truly felt i wanted to share this this morning this is a picture we found from 20 years ago 
this was actually um, Jamie had gone down to stay with his dad uh, during the Texas Motor Speedway races. His dad lived not very far from the the uh, racetrack there in Fort Worth. So anyway, this was two months before, let's see, April, May, June, three months before Jamie and I were married. He went down for a boys weekend and so that's like one of the best pictures that I have of, of my father-in-law and my husband. So anyway, I just wanted to share that this morning. Because, you know, we don't get to see each other. You don't you don't get to, unless you go look at somebody's Facebook page and try to see what they look like. We really don't get to see each other face-to-face -face and interact. But just know that Lance was one of the most genuine, good-hearted, kindest people you would ever meet. Stubborn, definitely stubborn. But stubborn in, not, in a good way. He just protected his peace. He protected himself. He protected his territory. And he protected his family. And um, he will truly, truly be missed. So anyway, I just wanted to share that this morning. So I hope everyone has had a really good week. Um, I know Jamie and I have had, uh, had a week to kind of get back in our routine. Our trips to Texas are still not complete, so like I said, we'll, we'll be up and down the highway a couple of times uh, over the next couple of months, so trying to finalize everything. Um, so, if you watched uh, a week ago Monday when Pastor Sherry and I did a, a quick little impromptu live uh, discussion, uh, one of the things we talk about these days is exposing... Uh, exposing ministries that are abusive and expo exposing these uh, pastors, ministers, who are, who may ha very well have, and, and I have observed a lot who have had um, the gift of prophecy and have a real anointing on their life, but there's just something off about their method and the direction that they've gone. It is a spiritual influence. It is a stronghold, a demonic stronghold that has taken a hold of them personally. And we as believers have to reach a level of maturity and knowing the truth that is in the truth that is in God's word and not being afraid to speak it. Um, you know, uh, Paul was put in prison for speaking the truth. Because he called out these Pharisees. He called out people that were operating in, you know, uh, Gnostic type teachings and that, that were saying that all truth is, is of God. And that's not necessarily true. I mean, and I don't want to go down that path. But anyway, I try to stick to my notes and not squirrel too bad this, evening, this morning. I count on Pastor Jamie uh, too much to keep me focused and, and going in the right direction. So this morning, I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit to um, guide my thoughts and my heart and my words this morning. So I just want to open us up in prayer. So if you'll bow with me, Father God, in the name of Yeshua, we just come before your throne this morning with, with praise on our lips and a grateful and thankful heart. Father, we thank you that in the seasons of life that you walk with us and there are times that you carry us and and hold us up and lord i thank you that you send you other people um other warriors to surround us uh while we are literally and spiritually on our knees in in trying to make sense of the things that have happened in our world and lord we know that um there's always going to be bumps in the road there's always peaks and valleys we understand that the peaks are the times of refreshing, but we can't stay up there on the mountaintop. We know, Lord, that we have to come back down into the valley eventually because there's people in the valley that need us. And so, Lord, while we are right now walking through the valley of the shadow of death and, and processing this, this life change, Lord, as many people out there that listen to us are walking through life changes and struggles and uncertainties, Lord, let us draw from the truth that you are there with us, that your Holy Spirit is here to guide us, to comfort us, to bring us peace, to bring us revelation in your word, to show us the truth of your word, Lord, and that to show us that we can draw strength from your word and your truth and what you've given us. So I thank you, Father God, for these seasons of, of times to not only just know 
that you are here and, and acknowledge that you are here with us, Lord, but to allow us to be a testimony and example to others who may be walking through uh, dark times, uh, times of uncertainty, Father God. Let us just be able to step out of our flesh and allow your Holy Spirit to flow through us and flow through our, our words that we speak and our actions. And Lord, let what we do and how we process things glorify you in all ways. Father, I just thank you that you have chosen us to be yours. You call us your own, Father. And let us find the, the greatest peace and comfort in that, Father God. We praise you and we thank you for these beautiful days that you've given us, Lord. And we thank you for what the blessings that we see and the blessings that we didn't see and acknowledge. We just thank you and we praise you, Father God. We pray these things in your Son's mighty name, Yeshua. Amen and amen. So anyway, we just thank you for joining us this morning. Um, so today, I, you know, I was seeking the Lord, um, and it's, I just feel like we're we're in a season right now of exposure and the things that that, uh, like I said, Pastor Sherry and I had a broadcast a week ago Monday. Uh, talking about these things because of personal things that we've walked through and we've had so many people that have um, come out of the woodwork that have been um, you know part what we call SR that have been victims of SRI what we call spiritual uh, ritual abuse uh, people that have been abused inside of ministries uh, whether spiritually physically or both um, we have been uncovering and exposing and working with people who have been uh, trafficked, you know, have been a victim of sex trafficking within ministries. This is disturbing, but understand, this is these are not new things. These are things that have been going on for some time. The woman who was caught in adultery. Let's let's just talk about her and. Um, the the woman had to you know when you are accused of adultery someone has to catch you you have to be caught in the act for um for the uh you know for the the accusations to stick when you understand that this woman the men who were accusing her these spiritual men why, how would they have caught her in the act of adultery unless they were present or participating? Things to think about. So I think of this, this precious person that we've been interacting with a lot um, who was trafficked for 10 years in ministries. And she, it, is her, it is her mission from the Lord to speak and expose, and not just to expose these people, but to actually go in and rescue people that are still being trafficked throughout these ministries. And, and she is on a mission. And, you know, we just, I, I'm to the point now where it's like nothing surprises me. What Anything that I hear about any pastor, preacher, evangelist, teacher, I'm not surprised anymore. I'm not shocked anymore because it, uh, when you reach a level of spiritual maturity where you can separate the person from the spirit that is operating through the person, you don't hold offense with the person. You get angry at the spirit that is manipulating and operating through that person. And that's true in, in, with, with anybody, any human being. All humans, all people were made in the image of God. They're children of God. But we, we you know, open doors for the enemy to influence through us and so this morning I wanted to go down a different uh, same but different road kind of along the same lines of what Pastor Sherry and I've been talking about and we do plan on doing more of these impromptu lives you know discussions where we can be a little bit more you know open and back and forth with each other uh, and get a little deeper into these things you know not within this our normal service because um, you know, sometimes you just need to be able to have a platform where you can just be real and be be a lot more, gra I guess graphic is probably the word I'm looking for. But yeah, there's some things that we talk about that get pretty deep. 
So I invite you to those. If you ever see those pop up, we don't schedule them right now because we believe that the Holy Spirit sometimes just says, hey, move on this. This is now is the time to speak. So they're not always scheduled as was, you know, the, the message we had a couple of weeks ago. So anyway, so let's talk about characteristics of um, that false prophetic spirit. Uh, I have been in several conferences, uh, gatherings, meetings, church services, whatever you want to call them, um, where I've personally witnessed these things that I want to talk about. And you may have too. And a lot of times, especially now when we see people who operate in this way that call themselves ministers, this spirit has caused so much bitterness in, and enough bitterness in people that they walk away from, from church. And, um, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why, why people, excuses people use to walk away. But I believe that this is one of the number one things, um, that cause people to fall away is when you, when you recognize this, this, um, false prophetic spirit, let's talk about the characteristics and just, just as I speak this morning, just try to remember if you've, you know, experienced this because I would bet that you have. So what does a false prophetic spirit look like? Well, a false prophetic spirit loves to flatter, flattery, build you up, stroke you, tell you, oh yeah, everything you want to hear, that tickling of the ear, the things that make you feel good, the things that make you vulnerable, that that expose you, you know, by, by buying into these things. A false prophet is not given, uh, they're not there to encourage or affirm, but to flatter. We all need to give and receive affirmation and encouragement, but flattery is insincere and it is self-serving. Anytime you hear someone excessively uh, and insincerely praising, there is self-serving, that is a self-serving spirit. That is a false prophetic spirit. Um, so many today, especially leaders, they're just so starved for that affirmation and approval that they're vulnerable to the flattery of a deceiving python spirit. Now, I don't want to get into python spirit. That's I know we keep talking about we're going to teach on these these biblical spirits. But the python spirit, it it literally it is a spirit and this is why it's called a python spirit. It squeezes the life out of you. It drains you spiritually, drains you physically. It exhausts you. It squeezes you where you can't breathe. That's why it's called a python spirit. So, um, in Acts, let's see, let me, on my Bible this morning, I think I got, let me pull it up on my phone. I want to read this this morning from Acts. We're going to read Acts 16, 16 through 19. Bear with me while I put this in here. Acts 16, 16 through 19. Good morning, Miss Cedra. Glad to have you this morning. Okay, let me turn to my Bible here, my digital Bible, because my Bible's over there on the couch open, and I really don't want to go over there. Um, let's see, Acts, Acts. I have my complete Jewish Bible open, so I have to... Okay, here we go, Acts 16, 16 through 19. Okay. Okay, so this is, um, this was Paul and, hold on, let me get back up to the top here. So this is, uh, Timothy joins Paul and Silas. So they're, they're wandering around teaching, um, unbelievers and, you know, Hold on, let me get back to the verse. Sorry, I don't claim to be organized this morning. It's been a very um, mentally trying week, so bear with me. 
And I don't have Pastor Jamie to keep me on track this morning, so I'm going to squirrel a lot. Okay, so beginning of verse 16. So, once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money from her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days, and finally Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the Spirit left her. She was speaking the truth, that she was speaking it under the influence of that python spirit. And that was a spirit of flattery. You know, she wasn't, what she was saying was not admonishing the Lord. It was a, it was mocking all, it was to, you know, the continual, oh, you know, the overly praise. And have you ever just encountered those people um, that are just, you, we call them brown nosers, you know that just will do anything and say anything to build this person, person up, but it's for their own personal gain. So, um, you know, as believers, we have to be so settled in uh, our identity in Christ and in God's acceptance that we are no longer susceptible uh, to the flattery of a false prophet spirit. So beware of those who use prophecy to flatter and thereby gain advantage. What's another characteristic of a false prophet or a false prophetic spirit? It loves to be seen and heard. Loves to be seen and heard. It loves the platform. It loves the spotlight. It loves it. Scripture is very clear that the Holy Spirit is in the earth to draw attention to Jesus. Jesus himself said that the Holy Spirit in John 16, 14, He will glorify me, for he will receive from me and will declare it to you. And Revelations 19, 10. Let me, uh, I'm going to document the scriptures along the way in case someone comes on later or wants to go back and read this. John 16, 14, and... Revelation 19, whoops, 19, 10. Revelation 19, 10 says, Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Beware of those who use prophecy to thrust themselves into the limelight. Mm. We see a lot of entertainment. We see a lot of... Um, one of the things Pastor Sherry and I have really been talking about is the, the presence. When you see someone who presents themselves in a manner <clears throat> that their dress makes you, the things that they are dressed in make you go, I really feel like I'm kind of offended right now. Like, is that appropriate? Let's, you know, <laughs> we laugh a lot about the, the skinny jeans and it's like, I'm sorry, I don't need to see what I am having to look at when you're up there in your skin tight skinny jeans, okay? Um, let's just leave that at that. So anyway, anything that draws attention to that spirit, that draws attention, that puts someone in the limelight, that elevates them, that gives them that flattery, they're, you know, beware, they're operating in this, this python spirit. It is a false prophecy spirit. So what else? It wants to be important. It wants to be relevant. Re relevant. Relevant. I can't speak this morning. This is indicated by the fact that, you know, prophecies are, we're seeing a lot of new movement, new age type things. These that use prophecy to gain status with other pastors and other leaders that say things to get in good with the people that have the big audiences that also in turn have the big wallets. Um, there is often a monetary move, a monetary motive involved 
with this spirit of false prophecy. Um, we see it in the church today. Uh, hold on, I got my pages out of order. You know, you can go on the internet and find uh, people who will send you a personalized prophecy in return for a donation. Um, these are not psychics, but those who claim to be Christian prophets. Uh, prophecies are not, those prophecies that come where you have to pay for a personal prophecy, those are not of the Lord and you need to be aware. The Word of God and true revelation from from the Lord and, and those, those things are not for sale. The, the Word of God is freely given as you should freely give, as He freely gave to us. It should not be for sale. Ooh, that's one of those things that gets under my skin. Here, you can, I'll pray for you, but you need to make a donation to my ministry. Wrong. Run. That's what I'm talking about. Things like that is what's left a bitter taste in people's mouth. I, you know, I said I personally observed, um, the, an, you know, people with that underlying suggestive monetary motive in many men and women that probably do have a true gift of genuine prophecy. Some of them that I have personally witnessed, they, I know they have that gift. I've seen them operate in the true prophetic, but somewhere along the line, they opened a door and they allowed people to get in there or they allowed that spirit, not people, that spirit operating through others to get in their ear that they, they, that takes them down that path of greed, that takes them down that path of, of the need to be known, well known. Um, we've seen ministers here very much lately falsify healing numbers without documentation of these massive healing numbers trying to, to elevate their ministry to make themselves look credible for their own personal gain, for that notoriety. That is wrong on so many levels. So many levels. Find ministries that if they say, I've had 100,000 people healed from this disease, they, they've got receipts to back that up. People that have witnessed, scribes that have documented, people that have seen, people that have been healed in those instances, their testimony coming forth, showing proof. Because anybody can stand up there and make up numbers and say, oh gosh, I had this internet ministry and we had this giant conference and 300,000 people were brought to the Lord that day and so many diseases were healed and yada, 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 yada. And then the next breath, they're on there begging for money because, you know, now they need to go do it again. And it costs money to have these conferences. And then they want to do it again and whatever. You know what? I'm looking for people that in their everyday life, they are just being obedient to the Lord. They're living a life that reflects what Christ did, what you know, he walked among the people. He put himself out there. He ministered to people. And, <clears throat> you know, there's so many things that he did on this earth, I promise you, that were not documented in the Word of God. We just got the highlight reel, you know? And look at what we got. Look how many miracles that we saw and we, we've read about and we've witnessed. And then as he's leaving the earth, he says, You will do greater things in my name than I have done. You know, Pastor Sherry has a great testimony of personally the the you know the whole, the Lord raising people from the dead through her faith through her. You know, she, these are documented, documented, and bound and published in a book. Instances of proof of people being raised from the dead. Other people have proof of this. Just beware. You have these ministries that, that sound too good to be true. They probably are. Um, there has to be a certain amount of humility 
uh, in these people too. And I, I, I see a common thread of narcissism through so many of these big megachurch glory seeking uh, wealth uh, entitlement pastors that that feel like they are holier therefore they should you know I'm living this blessed life country club lifestyle because I am somehow holier and closer to God same Holy Spirit same Lord you me kings and priests children of God it's all right there in the Bible we just have to have the knowledge the wisdom to seek the knowledge of the truth that's in the Word of God don't trust what men and women spoon feed you that's religion and that's what that's what I got out from under is people spoon feeding my faith and my beliefs to me when I broke away from that and, and you know it's good to have people that either confirm what what we believe the Lord is sh we're showing us test test the words that come from people I've had I've had ministers spout, you know, um, things that are so twisted. They've taken the word of God and twisted it for their own benefit and their own edification. And it's like, have the wisdom and spiritual maturity enough to go into the word and test those things that are being said to you. Uh, be, here's another thing. I learned this a long time ago. Be careful who you let lay hands on you and speak over your life. Be careful. Who you let touch you and pray over you because there are people out there with ill intent there are people out there operating in the spirit of witchcraft they want to put that on you and you have to have the wisdom and don't and don't be afraid to offend Paul and Silas and Timothy offended to the point of where it put them in prison speak the truth don't be afraid to speak the truth I have I have actually like told somebody not don't 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 speak don't don't lay your hands on me because the Holy Spirit just like boom don't let him touch you doom don't let it you know I've been in that instance and that that spirit in that person got very offended but I didn't care I didn't care because I had enough discernment the Lord gave me enough discernment and wisdom and knowledge from life experience to know there was ill intent behind that person's laying on of hands and what they wanted to speak over my life. You have the right to protect your peace. You have the right to protect you and to keep the enemy from infiltrating uh, into this battlefield with the cunning and the soothing and those, those words of flattery. Beware, educate yourself. So, um, so I was going to read this to you. Uh, this is about a, a, a man who was a minister that he, you know, probably had the genuine gift of prophecy. After preaching, he expressed his desire to pray for everyone who would bring a certain offering for his ministry to the front. I've seen this. I've witnessed it more than once. As he prayed and then prophesied over each one, I saw women looking in their purses to see if they had enough money to go forward and get a word. I believe this man was opening himself to a false spirit, a spirit of Python by his devious actions. Someone is asking you to pay them to pray for you, to pay them to prophesy over you, to pay them to speak a word into your life. Run! Put your wallet away and run. That is not of the Lord. I've had people stop. I Listen, I've been in Walmart before and walked by someone and the Lord said go back and speak to them go back and give them a word go back and tell them something stop and do this stop and pray this over them not one time did I ever ask that money that person to pay me I have a word of the from from the Lord for you I'm gonna need you to make a donation before I can release that word what kind of a message would that send to anybody standing around there listening that is not of the Lord. The word of God is not for sale. Prophecies are not for sale. 
Words of knowledge are not for sale. People have got to stop paying these people because somehow they think that, that they cannot be healed or they cannot be prayed over if it doesn't come from some big platform, big name, well-known, Italian suit wearing, BMW driving, country club living, pastor. Somehow they think that that person's more powerful. The word of God in your mouth is as powerful as the word of God in any believer's mouth as long as it is the word of God and doesn't have the selfish flesh attached to it. I cannot speak this loud enough. Take a stand for truth. Many ministries today would probably have not spoken up and said anything to this minister that I just read about because they are doing the same thing. And what he was speaking over these people was probably very positive and very flattering because who's going to go up and, and give you money for a negative truth? No, they're going to fluff it. They're going to, they're going to make it very generic. So, you know, this, this is what people who, um, fortune tellers, that's a fortune teller. You can say something and there's enough generic words out there that you could throw into a conversation and people are hurting so bad and so desperate to hear from the Lord that when they hear some kind of trigger word, keyword, oh my gosh, this, how does this person know? And in your own mind, here comes that, that spirit, that Python spirit, that false prophecies getting in your ears speaking through this person and you're finding comfort and peace in the wrong place when you should be finding it from the word of God and in his presence not from a paid actor who's playing a part for personal gain just saying to speak in the truth this morning if I step on toes sorry not sorry discernment is lacking in so many people because in this modern world, the lines between true and false are being blurred and they're being erased. We see this every single day. Turn on your TV, get on social media. You know, these, these, this, the lines have slowly been blurred and twisted and erased to where if we don't understand and have that relationship with the Lord to where he can show us beyond the smoke screen of what we're seeing then we fall prey we open that door and here comes those manipulating spirits that python spirit that's going to choke you to death literally and spiritually choke you to death in some charismatic movements they're tapping into these new age writings with the excuse that all truth is god's truth um, if this had been Paul's approach, he never would have confronted the Python spirit, like we read about in Acts 16, and cast it out. Because it was speaking, you know, what the Python spirit was saying was true. But taking a stand for truth is not always the most popular thing to do. Paul and Silas were arrested, beaten, thrown in jail, because they distinguished between true and false and cast out the false prophetic spirit. Because they refused to compromise. God sent an earthquake. Physically and spiritually. And turned the situation completely around. God is looking for people. Who will stand for his truth. In this hour. We are in, we are in the end times people. He's looking for people. That are going to stand up and speak the truth. Jesus said in John 8. 31 through 32. Hey, I don't have my. Uh typer here if you remain in my word when you are truly my disciples you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free there's freedom in the truth there's bondage in the falsehood 
If you've got prophets speaking things over your life, into your life, and something doesn't set right in your spirit, go with that. And I'm not saying that you need to rebuke them in that moment because you might need to go into the word and test test the word of the prophet against the word of God. And if it does not line up, then you know. Then rebuke. But if you know that you know that you know, just like Paul there, he turned around, he's like, enough is enough. You are coming from a false place. And he rebuked it and he recognized that he was at that level of spiritual maturity to recognize this is not coming from the Lord. I know the Lord. I walked with the Lord. I know what this looks like and you're not it. You're mimicking. You're imitating. You're putting on a production for attention. Hmm. So beware. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you let feed into your spirit. Be careful where you get your spiritual food. My husband likes to talk about the difference between a McDonald's cheeseburger and a steak. They're both going to feed you. They're both going to fill you, but one has no nourishment and substance. It's a false representation of nutrition. Yes, I'm calling out McDonald's. Don't eat there. It's evil and this disgusting and research McDonald's and I think you would never put it in your mouth again but anyway but there's that steak there's that local grown organic grass fed juicy fat thick steak yeah that's gonna fill me up too and that's gonna satisfy me and that's gonna feed nourishment to my body that's the difference. We have a lot of fast food cheeseburgers out there, McDonald's cheeseburgers out there in the pulpit right now. And, you know, it's kind of like carbs, I guess. When you eat too many carbs and you burn them off really quick, your body starts wanting more carbs. You start binge eating. You start eating more frequently. You start eating, you know, your body wants sugar. Your body wants those carbs because it burns it off so fast. Be looking for ministries that are feeding you greens and grains and meat. Not ones that are feeding you carbs and sugars and processed food. These are some processed, processed prophets out there right now. You need the ones that were grown in good soil with good food that have good substance to them. Those are the ones you should be seeking. And listening to and learning from so I hope this was a blessing to you this morning thank you so much for joining us today um, next weekend we will be back down in Texas handling some more of my father-in-law's estate and next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday uh, Shavuot in the Hebrew is um, next weekend as well so we'll do a little Hebraic teaching as well as talking about the Pentecost and the day that the church received the gift of the Holy Spirit and what does that mean to you and me today so we're gonna talk about that next week so join us back here should be at nine o'clock on Sunday morning it's gonna depend a lot on how our um, days leading up to Sunday go next weekend the kind of things that we're running into please be praying for Jamie and I um, we are, I speak a word uh, um, over his, his birthright. Um, there are some things that are up in the air right now, and we decree and declare that the birthright of the first son is protected, and we pray for the hearts and minds of all those who are involved in this process um, the Lord knows our hearts and he knows that the things we have been trusted with little and we know that he will trust us with much because we will do everything to glorify him and grow his kingdom um, these are the kind of people that we are 
And so we thank God that we are good soil. We decree and declare that 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 the birthright will not be cast into rocky soil where it will not be productive, that it will go to the heir, the rightful heir. And so we just covet your prayers and we thank you for that. Thank you for joining us this morning. And uh, Miss Cedar, it's good to see you this morning. And thank you for constantly reaching out to me and making sure that I stay focused. I appreciate you, my friend, and I treasure our friendship. So, anyway, love you guys. We will hopefully see you next Sunday. That is the plan right now. So, anyway, just keep us in your prayers. We continue to keep you in our prayers. And, um, anyway, God bless you, and we will see you back here, hopefully next Sunday. All right, love you guys. Bye.